got these legs, but no tabletop. In this video, I'm gonna make a new tabletop, but it'll need to be round. I'll also show you the problems I encountered and how I got round them. So there will be a few swears, but I've managed not to include them in this video. I've got these planks of wood left over from when I built my shed. I originally bought them for 70 pounds second hand, and I was able to use the majority of them for the floorboards in my shed. These are some of the ones that I've got left over. Hi, welcome to another DIY video. This week I'm gonna be making an outside table. I've made lots of tables in my previous videos and lots of table tops. What I've got to do is to sort out this table base and attach it to these planks somehow. It's going to be a round table, so actually it's going to use up lots more planks. But the outside planks, I probably won't have to use a full one. So I'm going to lay it all out and see what the best bits of timber I've got. These are all the items that I'm going to be using for this job. And I've also included a list of tools I'll be using. Some of the boards are quite damaged. This one's got a split in it, so I'll make sure that this is put on the outside and hopefully the split will be cut off when I then make the table round. Okay, I think I've sorted them out in the right order. To the good side, I'm gonna to have to turn over onto the other side. Okay, so essentially now this is the top, so I'm making sure that it's all nice. And then I'm gonna turn them all over because I'm going to then be working from the bottom side of the table to secure it all. And I'll use this one underneath, so it'll go underneath and use as a brace to attach them all together. And then I'll work out what the circle is and then do like a brace, different sections to hold it all together from underneath. So let's see how it goes. Okay, now what I've done is I've measured exactly halfway across, so 73 and a half centimetres, and I've put a, a screw in the middle with a bit of twine on it, and then I'm just gonna draw a circle with it. Okay, what I'm doing is just going round, I'm not marking yet, just to make sure I've got the boards positioned correctly, um, to make sure well, I can pull them in the right direction, so if I've got any imperfections, they'll be cut off. So let's draw the circle. Let's keep the pencil vertical, and then just go around. Keep the twine taut throughout. Wow, it's amazing. I didn't really think I'd use so much of that board, but I obviously need quite a lot of it. So it's using up quite a few boards. This board here is too short. I actually, you really do need a lot of the, the boards when doing this. Okay, you can see the circle now, and then I'll then start to put the braces in place to hold it all in position. Okay, all the bits of wood are laid out and I've got this centre brace. I'm going to screw it in and screw them all together. And you can see I've lined it up with this mark here to make sure it's dead central on the piece of wood. I'll screw this end in first, make sure it's all pushed together and screw the other end in. I'll probably put four screws into each section. Make sure it's gone a bit deeper, just in case I need to sand off this side. But remember, this is the bottom side. So I'm gonna flip it up anyway and sand it over on the top. I'm using four screws in each section of wood to get a good fix. I've made sure all the screws are countersunk deeply by screwing these in just a little bit further so I can sand this board down a little bit more. Okay, let's just make sure that this base is the right size. It's the first time I've done this, which I should have done this before, but just uh, put it here and just size it up because I'm going to put some braces around here. I just wanted to make sure it's not going to foul this bit. I might have to put an extra couple of braces across that way 
so that then this can screw into it. While it's here, I may as well just mark it up as it's in the correct position. Okay, now it's just sussing out how to do the outside. So I'm just gonna use this tool just to get a straight line with. So I'll make sure I line this up so that it's gonna be cut between these two. And I've marked it up, lined up this in the correct position. And then I'll do another one at that angle there, making sure I don't fail the legs that are here. Okay, that's that one cut. We'll line it up with the marks I've done and then we'll just work out the next bit. Put that there and then I'll fix those. Uh, so I'll do two at a time and do that all the way around. I've just adjusted that to get the right angle and then I'll draw that line on there. Okay, so those two bits are cut now. I'll glue them and then screw them in position. Okay, wood drill through here. Make sure it doesn't go through into the other bit, just to avoid the wood splitting when I'm gonna screw it through. get it all nice and circular. Okay, now this next bit, I'll just use one bit of timber for this bit, because essentially it's just holding these two bits together. So I'll make sure that that's at the right angle. I might, get, I might use another bit, because there's a big split on there, or use it that way. That's what happens when you use second-hand bits of timber, but it's great to recycle it all. Let's cut that first, see if it matches up before I do that line. Great, not bad, not bad, that fits there. And then I'll use this, this is a great little tool, put it under there, make sure it's all lined up at the, and set at the correct angle. So I can then mark up that bit. Great. That's good. I'll uh, glue and screw that in place. I'll mark it just there so I know where to put the glue. Okay, I've just measured and cut this bit. Just got to make sure that it goes, it goes about there, even though that's, there's a bit of an overhang there, it should be okay because we want to make sure there's enough space here. And then I'll just cut that bit straight in line with the planks. Well, I'm getting more confident now. I've cut three bits of timber and I'm gonna glue and screw these in position. Now I'm measuring, cutting, gluing and screwing. And again on this bit, I'm measuring, cutting, gluing and screwing. Yes, you've got it. On this bit too, I'm measuring, cutting, gluing and screwing. Okay, that's that bit done now. Just got to then let it dry and then think about the next stage, how we're gonna go around with a jigsaw and make it all circular. It's all a little bit wonky now, but it will soon look nice and round, especially when I turn the table up the correct way. I've just cut this bit of hardboard. It's nice and smooth on this side. So I'm going to make a sort of tool type thing to hold my jigsaw here, uh, like a guide, and I'll put a screw through here and it will rotate to cut the circle. So let's see how it goes. And I'll cut another one to go across here. It goes there, goes there. 
holds it all in firmly. And I'll screw it in place from the other side. exact center where I'm going to put this screw for this to pivot on. Well that seems to work okay. Now to cut the table around. I thought this was meant to be quick. It's not quick at all. I don't think it's even working. I'm going to give up on this idea. I'm not getting any ideas from the internet again, apart from my channel obviously. But I'm going to use this pivot tool to draw an exact circle. It works well for this. Now I'm just going to cut the tabletop with a jigsaw directly. I'm making sure I follow the line accurately. Great, that's worked. I've just got to tidy it up a little bit and sand it down so it's nice and flat and smooth. I'm going to get rid of this tool, it was rubbish, but it was quite good for drawing a perfect circle. I'm now planing down the really jagged bits of wood. And then now I'm sanding this all over so it's nice and smooth. There's lots of sawdust but essentially it's much smoother now so there'll be no splinters if someone puts their hand underneath the table. This bit here is a little bit rough but there's no splinters on it so it should be okay. The table is quite heavy and it's pretty solid. Okay now to sand the top down. I'm using a P40 grit. I'm now making sure the table is nice and round. And then I'm sanding down the top to get it all level. And I'm going across the grain to sand the wood back quicker. There's still a few rough bits around the edge here that need a bit more sanding. It's looking pretty good on this side now, but the top needs a bit of flattening out. There's a bit of a lip here. More sanding. I'm going to plane this bit down and it's quicker to do that than sand it. Okay, now to fit the table legs to the table. Okay, now I've got to measure up exactly where the table legs are going to go. I did that initially, however, after all the sanding around the edge, it's put the center at a slightly different position now. I've also got these, which came with the legs, uh, to screw in so the table top can come off easily to store it in the winter. Put these then that will screw into the table and then these just screw into there. So I've just got to work out how that works. So it's like a nut that they, then this bolt then screws into. But then the nut that can screw into the wood just with the Allen key. I've cut these two bits of pallet wood that these will then screw into. So we'll measure it all up get exactly centre and then put it together. Okay, I've lined that all up, that's dead central. Now I'm going to screw the battens, these bits in, and then I'm going to then mark up where these go, the female nuts. Okay, I've just tested this on this old bit of pallet wood, just to make sure I've got the correct drill size. And that is the correct drill size. And then you get an Allen key, and then you just do it up like that. And I'll do it so it's flush. So let's do it on the real bit. So I've marked exactly where I want to drill. And I'll move this over. There's the spots right there. I'm using a 10 mil drill bit. And then now the furniture screw fittings will go in. Okay, let's do that up so that then it's flush with the bit of wood. Let's just test it out. That goes there. That then screws into there. Great, it works. Let's try it on all the others. So 
solid. Because actually what we need to consider is that people will pick up the table and the legs have got to stay on. But even picking it up by the legs should be fine as well, so that's good. Okay, let's take this outside for more sanding. There's just a bit more sanding to do. There's still a little bit of a lip here. And there's a bit of a mark here, and there are some dents here. It's looking pretty good so far. I still think I need to sand the edge a little bit more so it's nice and round. Now it's nice and flat. I'm now gonna sand with the grain to get this smooth. It's now all level and it's all smooth. I'm changing to 120 grey sandpaper to get it even smoother and I'm still sanding with the grain. I'm now sanding around the edge at an angle to finish the table off nicely. I'm also doing the same underneath so it finishes the table off nicely and there's no sharp edge at all. Okay now I'm brushing all the sawdust away. You can see the nice edge here and it goes all the way around. There's still some imperfections in places, but it just adds to the character of the table. And that's what happens when you use recycled wood. But it's all looking quite round now. Okay, now I've got to drill a hole in the centre for the umbrella. I'm just going to test this out on a piece of wood. It's sort of split already. I don't think it's too great, but let's try it out. I've got this tool for drilling a hole in the middle for the umbrella to go through. I've also got this metal insert that goes into the hole. I'm just making sure that my tool is exactly the same size as the metal insert. So I've had to put some tape around the tool just to bring it together. Well, let's see if it works. The tape hasn't stayed on for long, but that's fine. As once I've started drilling, the tool stayed at the right diameter. Great, that's that done. Now I'm just wiping off any excess sawdust before I then seal this. Okay, I'm gonna seal the underneath with some penetrating oil. I'm putting this on and I'm letting it dry overnight. Just gonna give it a light going over with a 255 grit. Just give it a bit for going over just to get up any of the excess sawdust. Okay, now I'm gonna put Danish oil on, just with a soft, clean cloth, and I'll put it on liberally. Let it sort of set in for a couple of minutes and then wipe off any excess. Give it a shake first. The Danish oil gives it a nice natural finish, and it will stop the wood from rotting over time. It will probably need resealing again, maybe next year. I'm making sure this oil is all in the gaps. I'll let this dry for between four to six hours and then I'll give it another coat. It's brought the grain out in the wood nicely. This is the chrome insert that goes in the middle of the table. This is my final cost. By using second-hand boards, I've managed to keep the price down. It's ended up costing me £40.45. I think we need some friends to come round for dinner. Or I think I just need some friends. Well that's how you make a round table out of recycled wood. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for some more DIY videos. Turned out quite well in the end. That's another job done.